There you go. So I got to thinking maybe I should make a video on workflow because most people aren't organized, A. B, most people struggle with workflow. And this is right across every industry, anything you're doing. Workflow, workflow, workflow. People don't understand how important it is to be efficient on how you do things, especially when it comes with data, especially when you're working with other people and data, especially when you're working with clients and you need to make sure that everything is flowing nicely. And then when you start to grow and you hire people, see a lot of people forget about this and it's like one of the toughest things that people deal with. You go online and you're looking at what everybody's doing and you realize that everybody's got a different workflow. However, everybody's giving advice based on their workflow. And when they give advice on their workflow, well, guess what? They, uh, they get you to think about things that you may have not thought about in purchasing. And then you start looking down that rabbit hole and you end up buying stuff that you may not really need. This is a typical growth pattern of anybody that's getting into any kind of business, any kind of creative work, anything, 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 when it comes to getting things done with data. Now, everybody's got the USB key, external case with a hard drive, bump up to an NVMe, external hard drive, and head over to the external two terabyte, four terabyte Seagates. Then we realize not enough, so along comes one of these books. And not too long after that, well, it's the big boy, NAS system with four drives, ready to conquer the world. So what do you really need? Well, first off, let's start with our tools and the camera is the first one. Now this is a T7i and the images are saved at a fraction of what the bigger cameras do with bigger pixels. At the same time, this is a 1080p, so the videos aren't gonna be as demanding or taxing on your data storage. Your workflow changes because now you're looking at it from time, energy, and money when you're investing into these things because working with 1080p is much easier than working with 4K, 6K, 8K. And this is what really gets me with people because everybody was going crazy over this new cameras that came out and they're like, oh my God, I can't wait to get it. And they went and reserved cameras. And I was talking to some of these creators and I'm like, you, you bought the R5? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, so how are you going to edit it? What do you, what do you use to edit? Crickets. How are you going to edit the footage coming off one of those cameras? If your computer, your data storage, if your workflow isn't on par, with the tool you're buying. It doesn't make any sense. Heck, some of these people didn't even check to see if they needed faster cards. And those come with two SD cards that are at least 300 megabytes per second, which means you're spending 300 to $600 no matter what. Well, now that we've established that, we gotta look at what we actually need based on our tools that we are working on. And then what are we actually doing? Now, are you new to this whole thing? Are you just starting? Is there a certain reason you're starting, you gotta identify that. So if it's just YouTube videos you wanna do because you are a creator and you wanna start using the tool set and the opportunity to go online, then yeah, you only need something like 1080p. You're not gonna need that much data. You're good to go. Let's focus on what is around your budget to get moving. Maybe you are a business owner and you wanna start doing more creative stuff and get your online moving. Well, you might wanna bump up your budget a little bit because you're probably gonna wanna do more stuff with that. But at the same time, it might be something where you look at it and you go, 
Maybe I don't want to invest too much because I'm going to try it out. And maybe I need to hire somebody for this. So there's a lot of different things that are happening here that we need to think about. What are we actually doing? What is the time it's going to take us to do? And how is our efficiency going to play out with this? Now, we're looking at this as an investment if we're going to focus on growth in this. And this is where people get stumped up in all this stuff. And they go, oh, what did I do? And they go and they buy stuff they don't really need. One of the biggest things I've been seeing lately is people buying servers. Like I've had so many friends that are in business and they're like, oh, I bought a $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 server so I can get all my employees working on this server. And I'm like, you didn't need that A, B. It's going to take you too long to integrate all that. And you don't have a lot of time. And this is something that you need to, you know, pan out over time so you can train everybody and make sure everybody's on the same mindset. And uh, long behold, they, they just go for it. And then they cry because they're losing business or they're not making enough business in the time they would have made business with the old tools they had. And they didn't think about how integration should work. And this is where we come to from a small perspective of you just starting to working with other people to then growing and working with more people. How does that all fit the narrative? Now, at the same time, as you, you're growing, you're not going to have as much money to invest in everything. You need to pick where you're going to invest stuff. And I prefer to invest stuff in my cameras and the lenses and all that instead of all the data. So I want to make sure I pan that out accordingly. Now, when you're starting, easy peasy, you're going to have one of these for sure. This is a USB key, and you're probably going to be working with other people. You probably want to go store stuff on this. And these can come up big sizes. And I mean, you just carry one of these. Now, I have one of these. This is like waterproof, uh, x-ray proof, you name it. So if I want to carry something around in this and I don't want anything to happen, I trust this drive. This is a Samsung drive, 64 gigabytes. I have 128 gigabyte. I bring it with me. I have one around all the time because I never know when I'm going to need to move some data over. Now, granted me, our workflow is a little bit different. It's really matured. So, I mean, this is the critical aspect of why I want to show you all this because this is maturity through stages. You're not going to just go and jump into the big time projects. You're going to grow. And as you grow, you want to invest into that growth in that manner. Don't get ahead of yourself. And, you know, you, you end up calling that spending money instead of investing money because this is technology. This is the idea that future catches up to you much faster than anything or any time before. You realize that anything you buy today, it will be obsolete in two, three years. If your drive, if, if you buy a drive and it breaks two years later, there will be other drives and that might even be obsolete, which brings us to the next thing you're probably going to buy. And this was my next go tool. Um, when I started, I needed something where I was on the road, I was out, and this is a Euromaster. You can put any drive inside. There's different types of cases now. This is an older one, but I've dropped this everywhere. This has fallen. This fell in water off a boat. I dove in and I got it just in time. Still works. Waterproof, shockproof, you name it. However, it's super slow. It's not going to get me what I need. Now, I have it for emergencies when I go out in different type of weather. I have it there just in case. But um, your next step up will be one of these. This is the NVMe drive that I use all the time. Now, I have a couple drives that I'll alternate in this. That's why it's not locked. This is an external case. So if you look at external cases, you want to try out a few to see which ones uh, heat up or which ones don't. And inside, you will have one of these uh, connectors that you will be able to put a drive on. Now, this drive is an NVMe drive. You can get drives that go anywhere up to like 7,000 megabytes per second now. Now, clearly, you're not going to be able to take advantage of that in one of these cases unless you buy a Thunderbolt 3, and those are ranging up to like 250 bucks uh, a pop. So this one goes 10 gigabits per second. I'm getting around uh, 800 megabytes per second transfer rate, which is great for this. I, I can move stuff. I can edit on this. And this is what is good about this. You get one of these. You are able to buy a drive anywhere between $100 to $200. You, you throw it into one of these that costs around 35 bucks. You go to your laptop and now you can edit. So you move everything off your SD card onto this. You start editing. You're good to go. 
This is, this is what's amazing about this technology. Now, if you need a couple of these drives, you can alternate them. You can adjust them without having to have several of these. You can just pop it open like I do. I put another drive in, I'm good to go. When do I use this? Well, sometimes I use it when I'm on a shoot and I have a couple of these drives. I'll give them to the person I'm working with so they can have one of these drives and off they go. Okay, if they have an external case, they just pop it in, they're good to go. Now. Uh, most cases though, I'll have a couple projects on here that are like, kind of like, you know, either short term or semi short term. I'll have them on these drives. They're much quicker to edit and then throw them on to the system and off we go. Uh, so it can get backed up because that's our next case is backup. You can't really back up off of this. Like if you're doing a photo shoot and a video shoot with the current, you know, day and age kind of new technology with cameras, you're looking at it and you're saying, well, 100 gigabytes is 100 gigabytes. I'm gonna fill this pretty fast if I do maybe four shoots in a month and I don't edit fast enough. And this is the other side of things. How fast can you edit with the computer you have? And it's a big thing here because a lot of people don't have fast computers and things take longer to edit, to process. And this is, you know, this will fill up fast. In that case, what do you need to do? Well, this is very simple you need to buy one of these. Now, do you need one or two? This is a Seagate. A Seagate, four terabyte. The idea behind this is that you will load this up to your computer, you will have whatever file you're working on, and you will back up to this. This is more of a backup. Can you edit off this? Mm, not really. You can do 1080p, I guess, but it's gonna be super slow. It's gonna piss you off and you're gonna just wanna chuck it. So this is more of a backup. Now. At the end of the day, emergency calls, you can edit off of it. What you wanna do is always transfer over and back up to this. Now this will be good for pretty much anybody. It doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's creative work, business, you name it. This is a great backup. You can store it, you can lock it, you can do whatever you want with it. And it's awesome. Now, nothing's a backup until you back it up twice at least. So you need to buy two of these. So I would suggest if you're gonna buy one, buy a second one. If you see them on sale and you're going this route, buy a second one. Why is this good for everybody? Well, at the end of the day, when you're starting out and you don't know what you're doing and you don't know where you're going with everything, having these is much cheaper than buying anything else that's bigger. And what I mean by that is that this goes a long way with anything you need. And then later down the road, you can still use these to do a triple backup. They're great. What you can do is set one of these up to your computer. The other one gets set up to your router. Complete backup. You're good to go. You set up the software and it'll just back up or you just do it manually once a day, twice a day, or you know, once a week, depending on your workflow, depending on what you're doing, how you're editing, you name it. But these help you big time. Now, if you think about it, this will last you like a good, like, you know, cause you need redundancy. You, this will last you a good year if you're doing a weekly or bi-weekly project. Like this will last you, you will be good and you won't have to worry much about anything else backup wise. Everything will be there. You're good to go right at the touch of your hands. However, what happens once you start to grow a little bit more and you're starting to grow fast and you realize, hey, I'm doing a lot of work and I'm probably gonna be sending stuff online. So I'm using something like you know a cloud-based system. Now, you're not storing on the cloud-based system. You're just transferring it on. You'll probably look at something like a book. Now, this is the Western Digital My Book. They're the newer ones that exist out there. This is an older one. And it does have a connection to the internet. You connect this right to your uh, uh, um, router and you're off to the races. Now, you can connect this straight to your actual computer as well. But what happens is someone has a drive in it and it might be four terabytes, might be eight terabytes. They go pretty big. Now, as they get bigger, they they put two terabyte, two hard drives in there and then you can get some redundancy in there in case one of the hard drives breaks. And at that point, you start looking at NASes, okay? Network uh, storage is awesome. I, 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 I can't explain to you in any kind of way how important it is without you experiencing it. When you're looking at something like this, now this isn't a NAS system. This is just a backup system. It's not gonna get you what you need. You won't be able to work off of it. It's gonna be super slow, but the newer ones are getting faster and I've heard people being able to edit off of them. I'm not sure what they're editing. 
but they're able to do that and that's great especially if it's connecting if there's some if you can find one of these that's connecting with something at least 10 gigabit speed then it probably works and is fast enough some of the drives do go up to 250 megabytes per second in these so you you're, you'd be good to edit if that's the case but we don't know what the interface is like and i haven't tried them so uh, i can't advise that now in this case you are using this as a backup so if you were to buy one of these and then you decided not to buy a second one well guess what? You're probably going to want to go buy one of these, which is like eight terabytes. What will happen then is if you buy one of these and it's got two drives in there and it's redundant, then, you know, you can just erase everything off this and have it stored in there. It's redundant and then just start loading this one up again. It is just, how do you move data? That's the question. And how fast will that be for you? Because at the end of the day, you're wondering yourself, well, where am I going with all of this? Because I'm spending more money on this and I'm trying to do bigger projects and now I'm working with people and maybe I'm going to be hiring some people and maybe I'm going to be sending my uh, editing to be done externally. Maybe I'm going to send it down to some people across the world. Who knows? And then maybe you're working with some clients that, you know, there's an internal team and you're working with them and now you got to figure out how is storage going to work? There's nothing more embarrassing. And I, I, I can tell you this from experience. There's nothing more embarrassing than you going, I... I don't have any more space. Hold up while I go buy another one of these or something. Okay? That's, this is reality. Okay? You fill up. You don't even realize it sometimes. Because some projects will be so big. Now, like I've done some projects where it's a terabyte. And I'm sitting there and I had only one of these on hand. This is why, another reason why I have two of them. Okay? We had a terabyte between all the cameras, all the stuff on there. I got to tell you, it's embarrassing. And then you look at it and you go, what do I do? Well, I always have my laptop with me so I can move stuff on there. But it's just kind of like you're sitting there and you go, where's the professionality of it? If I'm looking to work at the next tier, I need to be professional and I need to grow my business accordingly. So I need to invest in all of this stuff. And we need to look at it as investment. Now, as we start to grow, the idea becomes, well, what, what's next? Well, where do we go from here? And, and my thoughts for you guys is always, don't spend money, invest money. And we look at it from that perspective. Now, I'll be doing a full review on this. But this is my awesome Synology box. And when you're looking at this awesome Synology box and you're asking yourself, well, what is a Synology box? And it's just another uh, NAS system that exists out there. Now, when you're looking at... Uh, when you're looking at anything that is a NAS, you want to ask yourself, what do you actually need? And what are you going to be doing with it? And there are many out there. And what I meant before, I, I stand by it. Technology has changed. I bought this uh, about 2019, so about a year and a half ago, two years ago. And I bought this, and I got to tell you, there's some new ones out there that are just amazing. Now, this will run you anywhere between 1000 up to like four or $5,000, depending on what you buy. On the back, you will see that there are two connections to the internet. I can get two gigabit speed. The newer ones, you can get 10 gigabit speed, you can get Thunderbolt and get 40 gigabit speed. What are you doing with it? How does it really fit the narrative of what you're trying to achieve? And this is where it gets really good. This has four drives in it. I literally can just pull this out and this will have four of these 10 terabyte drives. I can now have redundancy in here. I can load this up. And once I load this up, I'm good to go. And, and I'm, I'm, you know, it just starts to work and it does marvelous things. Now you can use this as a, just a NAS. That's a backup system. You can make it into a server and make it work. Now there's four of these drives. I happen to buy the um, Exos. These are uh, server-based um, industry. Good at drives, expensive to do the job, but they're not gonna break and they go pretty fast. Now you can edit off this box, no problem. When this is connected to the internet, to your router internally, you can edit to it. You don't have a problem. It goes 250 megabytes per second. Like we're talking huge speed, that is great. And you can edit off these drives. They're quality drives. Now, you, most likely if you're buying one of these, I had started off with a smaller version of this. I bought it, I tested it out. It was the 218J or something like that. And it, it was just not pulling its weight. It wasn't powerful enough. I couldn't do what I wanted. This does the job. Now, my next upgrade will probably be a Thunderbolt 3 with SSDs instead of these big drives. Now, at the same time, 
I'm not sure because our workflow has changed with everybody that's working. And what we're trying to achieve here is a little bit different of a workflow for everybody that's working both internally and externally with everything we're doing, including the clients that we're working with so they have access to everything. This uh, quick mock-up that I have from like the 1990s in the software I found, um, it, it literally is our workflow. The Synology box sits up here and, and the Synology box, uh, this is a backup, it will be at a remote location. Now you can have one of these in the studio where you're working where most of your employees will be, but you wanna have this at another location where it can back up everything. At the same time, we are focused on this cloud and everything is connecting right to the cloud. I will be looking at myself from a remote position or I'm working in the studio. I am connecting in some kind of way to the internet. This router is representing the internet. Now, at the same time, we're looking at an editor who might be in-house or working somewhere else. They're either connecting right to the router or they're connecting to the internet and then going to the cloud or they're going straight to the cloud from their place. Now, the client will be going right to the cloud. All of this relates back to the Synology. Any changes being made here, this is backing up. And we are moving software that is backing up through Google in this case. And we're going through the Google Drive because it is the best bang for the buck for us. And you need to look at that for your best opportunity here. And to put it into perspective, you know, for, for our workflow, we, we are up to 27 terabytes here. And let me just zoom in on this. We are up to 27.2 terabytes. That is a lot. These are the videos I'm making on the different routers that you should be considering if you're going to be working off um, a Synology box or any kind of server. Now, when we're looking at this, what we're saying here is your workflow may not look like this, but for us, we are literally going out doing a shoot and then the client will have access once everything is uploaded. And we're talking 100 gigabytes can upload in like, you know three, four hours to eight hours, depending on where we are and where we're uploading from. This will upload to the cloud once we, once we you know, get to the studio or we're at whatever location, it'll get up to the cloud now, the client has access, it starts backing up and we're making two copies. One copy will resume Died in the Synology and on the cloud and nobody will be touching that. That's the original. And then there's be another second copy that will be accessed by everybody else. The reason we do this is for redundancy and in case something happens and stupid things have happened where you're just sitting there going, how could that happen? And we don't want to be those people. So I will be doing a further review on these drives and why I went with these Exos drives. I will be doing a review on the Synology and I'm considering, hey, what's next and what you should be thinking about when you're moving forward with anything you're trying to achieve. And of course, uh, we'll be looking at in terms of look at all this stuff and ask ourselves, hey, what are we doing in terms of you know, buying the next computer, buying the next laptop. What is good for us based on all this stuff? Because now once we have something like this integrated, do we really need these big hard drives in the computers? Do we really need a big computer? You know, and what do we really need? This has been the, the idea that like many people are, are like in their heads, they're constantly going back and forth, trying to see pros and cons of everything. They watch a million videos and then they're struggling. At the same time, they're comparing themselves to somebody they're not. And it, they're thinking about themselves as somebody they're gonna be in the future. And the question is, how does that investment really work? Because I could tell you this analogy box, this is like, you know, 800 bucks. And the drives are all like, you know, three to $400 each. And the new stuff that's out, they have $1,500 boxes that are connecting with faster uh, speeds and you can go with NVMEs. And then I sit there and I go to myself, what is the price that I'm willing to invest for a better opportunity for my workflow to get quicker, more efficient, more secure, so that everybody we're working with can be on the same wavelength as me on a more efficient level and really appreciate the investment we're doing to make things work better. So my name is Nikos. If you have any questions on all of this, please let me know if you want to see a video that you have been thinking about in terms of all this stuff. Please leave the comment below. Hit like, subscribe, and of course, check out these two videos. One of them will be uh, the next uh, video on this uh, awesome box.